welcome to our jelly plate review. Here I've got my Jelly Arts gel printing plate and I store it in its container and keep it flat and make sure I don't stand um, anything else on top of it. So it comes with these covers either side to help actually keep it quite stiff and me keeping things in its original packaging. So then that reveals the jelly side. So I sit that down. And I've actually got a big piece of glass here so that it um, stays nice and solid. And this looks like it's got some stuff on it. And then that's all we need to do to be ready for our jelly printing. So I've got some other bits and pieces together and I'll include a full materials list down. And I find you need plenty of space with some room for the paints, room for your wet stencils, and then also an area so that you can roll the brayer out as you go. Okay, I've got my jelly plate ready and we're going to pull some prints. So, I haven't been real happy with some of the ones I've done so far. So what we're going to do is start off with a light colour in a blue and add a slightly darker blue to add some contrast. Doesn't need a lot of paint. I'm going to brayer, just roll that out. And the challenge is really just to get an even layer. And of course, have your blank paper there so that you can roll it out. Okay, so for my first layer, I'm going to use some of the orange bags. On there. Got my first sheet of paper. Uh, smoosh it down. And I've seen some people using a brayer over the top. I sort of just like to use my hands and I can feel it. And that gives us the start of that pattern. So, what I like to do is actually do this in pairs. So, we use that as our first sheet. Then we pull that off and come over to our spare sheet. And then get a second page. You can see the pattern on there quite nicely. And then lay that down. And sort of give us a bit of a mirroring effect. It's the opposite to what we've printed on the first one. Okay. So we've what we've got left. I like to give it a bit of a spit through the water. Sometimes you can get a third pull out of it. And there we go. And we can see some blank bits. So what we can also do there is just press it around on the bits of paint that are left. See what else we can get off. Okay, then we'll leave those to dry for a few minutes and then move on to our second layer. Now for our second layer, I'm going to use the same blue that I used in the first and then a slightly darker blue as well to try and get something a bit more in the middle. So for this layer, we don't want to cover it up quite so much. We want some of it to be able to show through. And three layers seems to be about the truth of paint. And then spreading it around to get a nice even colour. So one of my favourite things to put on is this, I guess it's almost like sequin scrap. It's being sold as gift wrap in the local craft shop. Got a few different sizes. I've cut a long strip. So we're again returning to our first piece. Then pop that on top. And again, use our hands to smoosh it down a bit. And then for the reveal. Oh, that's interesting. So in some of the thicker areas, it hasn't actually come up as well. The more we've got paint on those, you can use those to add to 
your art journal or just to create a nice paint? On your scrap page. So again, getting that second piece. I'm not too worried about how well it lines up. It's usually discard the edges anyway. And there we go. So again, just for that last of it, since we've probably got enough paint there to get another one out of, give it a little light spray. And our third piece. Oh. Sometimes that third one's the charm. Now I'm going to continue my theme here of going from light to dark. Then we'll try some in the reverse way. So we're going to put a much darker colour. And again, just mixing it with a little bit of one of those slightly lighter blues. And then for my very last layer, I'm going to use one of these stencils, which is a Crafter's Workshop one. And rather than putting it on square, I'm going to put it on at a bit of an angle. Then again, using my very first one. Okay, and then pulling that off, again using that on our scrap paper. A bit of design. And then our second one. Somehow I like that a bit better than the first. It's always interesting to see how they come out. And then finally our last one, a bit of spray. Oh, that gives us a nice watery effect as well. So you can see the three different effects you get. <laughs>